Okay, so um, let's get started. Um, so hello everyone. Uh, welcome to our today's EMU Zoom seminar. Uh, it's uh, really my pleasure to welcome uh, one of my old friends, also my colleague, Dr. <coughs> bai Dong Ho, um, from Institute of uh, Biophysics, um, uh, Chinese Science Academy. Uh, today, give us a, a talk related to the B cell biology. So very, very brief um, introduction uh, about Bai Dong. So Bai Dong um, actually uh, graduate uh, from clinical medicine, actually, I, I found it for the first time from uh, Beijing Medical uh, University. Uh, and then after he, he uh, graduated uh, from medical school, he actually, he uh, went on for the um, the uh, physician training uh, from PUMC, which is Beijing Union Medical College Hospital, um, all the way up to the chief resident. Um, and then uh, during the the, the uh, resident training, um, Baidon decided to also divert himself into a scientific training. Uh, he actually started his PhD training from uh, 1997 in uh, medical sciences in Beijing uh, Union Medical College. Um, and then after which uh, he uh, continued to pursue his postdoc training, <clears throat> first of in the um, in the Vanderbilt University in Nashville in Division of Cardiovascular Medicine. And then uh, afterwards, he uh, switched to uh, a Department of Microbiology and Immunology in uh, UCSF. So, um, so Baidon's lab um, mainly focused um, in studying how the important effect molecules of the immune system, which uh, all played the critical roles in host defense against the infection, uh, against the infection and then how it's um, uh, uh, used, utilized as a common to in immune therapy. Uh, his team uh, is mainly focusing on studying the mechanism by which antibody is uh, generated in viral infection and autoimmune disease. Um, the lab's goal is to use the knowledge uh, to uh, learn from the basic science to develop new, new uh, vaccines and strategy for uh, the, for the uh, immunotherapy. Uh, the main focus in his lab, including uh, several different aspects, which uh, including uh, to study uh, how to facilitate the um, the uh, study of antibody responses in viral infection. And then uh, his lab also developed a, a novel uh, model antigen system based on the viral-like particles. And then second part of his lab is to understand how the auto, auto, auto antibodies are generated in, during the autoimmune disease. And third, um, his lab also uh, developed a new method to enrich antigen-specific B cells, which could facilitate the, the uh, dissection of the mechanism by which B cell differentiation is regulated. And last but not least, um, his lab also developed a novel vaccine technology using virus-like particle as a platform and method to obtain high affinity antibody using single cell antibody cloning uh, techniques. And then um, using these uh, techniques, um, uh, they're able to develop a new universal vaccine and the antibody for uh, the viral infection such as flu uh, vaccine. So I think uh, without further ado, uh, Bai Dong's gonna to tell us um, the role of germinal center competition. Um, so thank you so much Bai Dong to uh, participate on our platform and we are uh, looking forward to your talk. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you, Chuan. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Right. Okay, all right, great. But yeah, thank you, Chuan, for giving me the opportunity to share our work uh, on this fantastic seminar series. Uh, also, uh, Xiaolei, thank you, Xiaolei, for hosting this session. You know, I know it's quite late now in the States, and so thank you all for attending. So my lab is based on uh, Institute of Biophysics, uh, Chinese Academy of Science, uh, uh, a long-term interest in how B-cell responses are regulated, especially to real-world antigens such as a virus. And today I'm going to share with you a recently finished work on how GC computation contribute to antibody uh, response against the antigen that has a potential to change or escape uh, antibody recognition. Um, so viral antigen can escape uh, antibody recognition. HIV is a, a extreme example. It's known that you know an infected individual hosts a large repertoire of uh, viral quasi species expressing mutant amino protein. Other viruses like influenza virus or SARS-CoV-2 are less variable, 
but there are mutations still cause uh, severe problems such as a breakthrough infection and the new pandemics. Uh, anybody, especially neutralized antibodies, are the uh, major arm um, of the uh, uh, immune defense against uh, viral infection. It generally assumes that when the virus escape, our immune system make new antibody to chase the muted virus. Thus, if we are fast enough, we win. If not, we lose. However, uh, this uh, catch me if you can game seems somewhat passive from perspective of our immune side. Uh, a new question is, uh, can change of antibody get ahead of a change of virus? Uh, that is, can the immune system anticipate the change of a virus and make antibody that can block potential future uh, 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 variants? Indeed, there are some examples. <clears throat> Uh, uh, that the immune system can do it. For example, the broadly neutralizing antibodies of HIV, uh, which was formed in the so-called elite controller, usually after two or three years of infection. This broadly neutralizing antibody can help to keep the virus at a very low level, even in the absence of antiviral drug treatment. Sequence analysis of the uh, immunoglobulin gene revealed that uh, generation of uh, being antibody require extensive somatic hypermutation as shown here. And if this mutation were reverted back to the germline, they fail to neutralize. In fact, they totally lost their ability to bind. In other words, the precursor of broadly neutralizing antibody uh, uh, have very low affinity to bind the virus. So the question is, how are they generated? Now, um, uh, we are pretty sure that the, the being antibodies are a germline center product. For uh, those of you who are not very familiar with this field, the germline center uh, is a stage of B cell reaction. During this stage, antigen reactive B cell and undergo massive proliferation and somatic hypermutation on their immunoglobulin gene. This condition provided the basis for a selection of a high affinity antibody. GC selection required um, uh, a limiting factor. Uh, as elegantly demonstrated by Newton's white lab, <clears throat> the limiting factor is the help from the uh, TFH cell. During the process of selection, GCB cell receive a TFH um, uh, help will undergo further clonal expansion. Those uh, that cannot will die. Naturally, those GCB cell acquire higher affinity have an advantage in the competition. This competition mechanism offer a good explanation uh, for antibody affinity of maturation. Uh, but for the generation of a being antibody, however, it's create a serious pi paradox. Uh, as we know, um, being antibody derived from uh, low affinity precursor B cell in a polyclonal uh, response to virus, uh, there are B cells recognizing the dominant epitope um, of antigen. And those B cell, uh, and also B cell that recognize the subdominant epitope. Um, usually the, the dominant epitope recognizing B cells are more numerous and have, uh, have more high uh, affinity. Uh, so during the immune response, these B cells are more uh, easily uh, activated because they receive the strongest stimulation and uh, help from TFH cell and thus produce more pro progenies. In contrast, the no affinity cell uh, clones are less able to receive help and thus have poor chance in computation. Indeed, uh, loss in computation by low affinity B cell to enter GC on this stage <clears throat> has been clearly demonstrated by Nuisance for Lab more than a decade ago. They used the heptanated antigen. And more recently, Palindrome Lab uh, reported similar funding using a native uh, protein antigen. So how to reconcile this paradox? A few years ago, Garnet Castle Lab did an investigation. They cloned antibodies from cultured GCB cell induced by antigen, such as a recombinant anthrax uh, protective antigen or influenza hemoglobinin. Uh, they found that the avidity, uh, avidity because they, they measure you know, whole antibody, the avidity of the GCB cell uh, binding to antigen span a large uh, range. Uh, uh, so, uh, and also this, actually this phenomenon has been uh, observed by uh, other groups such as the vectoral group, uh, you know, they were also reporting the same year. From those results, Garnet uh, proposed that 
in responding to a complex antigen rather than a haptonic antigen, uh, the competition in the GC might not be very stringent. Yeah. And, uh, and thus, low affinity clones may have chance to stay in GC for some time. Although this, this, this is a permissive, this permissive model explains the existence of low affinity clones in GC, but it's only a snapshot. In fact, we didn't, uh, it didn't tell either the origin uh, 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 or, you know, more important, I think the fate of a low affinity B cell in the GC computation. <clears throat> So why is this uh, uh, theoretical issue so important? Uh, not just a, a mental exercise for a few immunologists like me. Yeah, this is because you know this issue has something to do with real world problem. For example, uh, uh, universal flu vaccine is uh, urgently needed for better protection of future pandemic. Uh, a popular strategy is to target a stock region um, of the hemoglobin because this region is less variable than the head part, uh, head region. However, it's known that stock region is a poor, uh, it's a poor immunogen because fewer B cell can bind to it. And those binding to the high uh, uh, variable, uh, but then, you know, immune dominant head, uh, most of them to the highly variable, uh, but and the dominant uh, uh, head region. <clears throat> Uh, of course, in parallel, uh, the affinity of the, the stock binding B cell is generally low. Thus, you know, to, to, to reduce the suppression caused by competition, current vaccine strategy either use a, you know, a headless uh, strategy or a chimeric strategy, you know, to minimize, uh, to minimize the, 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 the competition induced suppression, you know, in the design vaccine to immunize or to boost. Unfortunately, uh, a recent clinical trial using this later strategy uh, failed to demonstrate that the abolition competition could automatically augment the anti-stock response. So where should they go? Before I dive into the, uh, the data, and let me say a few words about uh, you know, why we step into this field. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we are interested in antiviral B cell uh, response previously, we demonstrate that uh, a B cell toll-like receptor uh, can sense viral genomic materials and synergize with the B cell signaling to enhance antibody response. Um, more, uh, more, uh, a few years ago, actually, and you know, we um, we demonstrate, you know, under these conditions, that antigen-specific B cell uh, rather than dendritic cell, you know, can serve as a dominant antigen professional antigen presenting cell to prime CD4 T cell response. Uh, this unique feature of antiviral response suggests to me uh, there was some new things still unexplored and await discovery. Uh, to research <coughs> antiviral response, uh, however, in our lab, we didn't use viral, uh, virus very often. Instead, uh, we use a recombinant antigen called the Q-beta VLP. Uh, the reason is uh, simple. In real infection, everything changed, and which makes uh, the you know, result hard to interpret. Q-beta uh, VLP is a good antigen to mimic a virus. It's a particulate uh, in, in, uh, in, in shape and have a densely arrayed epitope on the surface. More uniquely, uh, it contains uh, nucleic acid inside, uh, yeah, depicted here, which could mimic viral genomic material as demonstrated by uh, electro uh, microscopy and a gel staining. Another benefit is that we can easily modify the Q beta and to make it uh, make tools for research. For example, uh, we can use a fluorescently labeled Q beta, you know, to stain antigen specific B cell very nicely. And uh, if needed, uh, we can use a magnetic beads to enrich those B cell for detailed examination. Here, is some example is published already. An interesting observation is that Q beta immunization induces a long lasting GC reaction. <clears throat> which is not seen with the immunization with a regular protein antigen, yeah, as, as the, you know, depicted here. Uh, uh, of course, I should mention that, you know, uh, long-lasting GC is a common in viral infection, but not in immunization uh, or vaccination. However, this phenomenon is quite intriguing to me uh, because the function of GC is uh, believed to make high affinity antibody. So 
if GC can produce high affinity antibody to regular protein energy in short time, so why uh, does it take so long to produce high affinity antibody to virus or, or kill beta? You no, know, it doesn't make much sense. So I guess there must be something interesting here. Uh, the way we examine low affinity B cell response is based on our uh, magnetic enrichment method. And in this protocol, B cell uh, that can bind uh, to kill beta VLP in vitro are magnetically trapped on the column, and those that cannot flow through, uh, uh, are staying in the flow through. After adaptive transfer to a new host, they can be identified by a congenic marker. This approach is uh, different from the previous study in which BCR transgenic cell um, of higher or lower affinity were used. However, within this method is better re reflection of a physiological condition because it's polyclonal. Yeah, this project uh, was started in our, uh, in our lab more than a decade, a decade ago, and it was carried out by two uh, uh, very brilliant and diligent students in, in, in Relay, actually. Chan Liu, uh, Chan Liu actually started the work. She transferred the depleted or more depleted cell into the reg one deficient mice and immunized them with qubit VLP. She found that in this condition, both cell fraction can start a GC reaction as depicted here. And uh, although it's clear that the mark uh, depleted cell produce uh, mark depleted produce more plasma cell and uh, and antibodies, and uh, this was this was not totally uh, surprising because it's known that no affinity B cell had no intrinsic defect to start GC reaction, but they indeed are less able to differentiate the word plasma cell. A potential caveat is that the GC reaction in the de depleted transfer was started by some high affinity B cell not sufficiently depleted, right? To address this, we transfer cells from mice deficient of AID, you know, the key enzyme for somatic hypermutation and affinity maturation. The logic was if uh, insufficient depletion of high affinity B cells start the GC reaction, we would see similar GC reaction with a depleted transfer of the AID deficient cell. The result was the opposite. The depleted AID knockout cell produced a much reduced GC reaction, more than tenfold down. This result indicates that the GC reaction in the depleted transfer experiment was largely contributed by the low affinity B cell, which gained affinity during this process. Um, with this work out, we start our cell searching experiment in which the higher and the low affinity B cell were mixed together, and the response was observed in the same recipient. Indeed, this was an experiment I challenged my students because I predict that the lower affinity B cell will be outcompeted, but the truth is opposite, uh, as shown here. The, the lower affinity B cell had no problem to join the GC reaction, despite they produce uh, you know, they produce a few plasma cell. By quantification, uh, you know, we found a significant increase in GCB cell in the mixed transfer condition compared to separate, compared to, you know, the separate uh, transfer condition, you know, suggest actually the lower affinity B cell actually benefit from the computation. Uh, Chan also uh, examined the kinetic of response, and uh, she found that at the early time point, the contribution to GC by depleted B cell was much lower. It's much lower uh, than the later time point. This result confirmed that the lower affinity B cell was indeed under disadvantage at the beginning of the GC reaction, but they gradually gained a place in GC later on. I should point out. In the mock depleted cell, there was both high affinity and low affinity B cell. So the roughly equal contribution to later GC reaction by depleted and mock depleted cell, suggesting that a lower affinity may play a bigger role uh, in the long GC reaction. A potential explanation for, uh, you know, uh, is that high affinity and low affinity B cell are actually not competing. Yeah, as suggested by the permissive model. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, so, uh, 
you know, the permissive model indicate that, you know, they probably recognize different epitope. And so, uh, you know, they are, they are not indirect competing as we see that way. You know, to address this issue, we collaborate with Dr. Zhu Ping in our institute. <laughs> he is, uh, uh, is uh, his postdoc. And so we cloned monoclonal antibodies from assorted GCB cell and the Yan obtained a structure of antigen binding to the VLP by cry em <laughs> Here is the structure of the Q-beta, which is a typical acosahydro uh, particle with a diameter of 30 uh, nanometer. Each uh, Q-beta particle consists of 180 monomers with uh, three slightly different uh, conformation. Two monomers form a dimer. And uh, these two, uh, so beta A and the beta B uh, loops actually protruding on the particle surface. Uh, we obtained more than 20 high resolution structure of the VLP antibody immune complex. <laughs> and here are some example. Due to the symm uh, symmetrical nature, you know, the antibody bound on the Q beta uh, VLP, you know, uh, you know they, they show some patterns. However, you know, closer examination of, uh, you know, indicate the majority of the antibody bound to the protruding loop on the dimer. Some bound to one, and uh, some bound to both. And only one antibody was found to bind outside the loop region and uh, to a site near the five-fold axis. Thus, although Q-beta VLP is a complex antigen, it possesses a single type of dominant epitope located under the beta A and the beta B loop. So what about the antibody from lower affinity B cell. We we'll obtain uh, the structure of the immune complex for five antibodies from lower affinity derived GCB cell. All of them bind to the dominant loop. So it's appear, uh, apparent that the high affinity and the lower affinity B cell was in, indeed completing directly. So the question now becomes why the outcome of competition in our study are different from the others. A major difference is that we use VLP antigen uh, uh, rather than a regular protein antigen. VLP antigen has repetitive epitope, and so they can engage antibody or B cells with a multivalent binding, which can substantially increase binding ability. To have some ideas like how B cell interact with the antigen, uh, we uh, employed several uh, techniques. Two of them are um, based on uh, binding and kinetics and the, the, the first actually fixed VLP on the surface. And so you examine uh, interaction with uh, the uh, antibody FAB uh, fragment, the monomer. So this is a, a monovalent interaction, the so-called true affinity. The second fixed the antibody on the surface and then you examine uh, the binding to VLP in solution. So it's measured multivalent interaction. The final one is a computation-based IC. Uh, in which you know we use unlabeled VLP to compete the binding of fluorescently labeled VLP on Cho cell, you know, expression in any anti uh, anybody. So it's measured the multivalent interaction too, but you know, until steady state condition. Using the monovalent interaction I see, it's clear many antibodies from the lower affinity actually here uh, fall below the detection limit. Uh, this is consistent with the fact that they, are, they, they have a low uh, affinity origin. After uh, change to the, you know, the IC measuring multivalent interaction, however, those B cells now can bond, uh, you know, conforming uh, that they are uh, indeed antigen specific. And this condition, you know, signal for most of the other antibody are saturated, like both, you know, from natural GC reaction or the, from the lower affinity transfer study. When tested on the cell surface, all of them antibody can bind VLP. Now, this is uh, intriguing because we didn't find a direct correlation <laughs> with their, uh, you know, the connected based affinity or ability or neither a difference between, you know, the uh, 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 these two group. This result, you know, offers some support for the notion that multivalent interaction could at least alleviate the difference of bonding ability to some extent. However. Given that we could only obtain antibody from a low affinity derived GCB cell that can bind the fluorescent VLP, it, you know, we sort them out. So this is not really the, the, the initial or the, 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 the low affinity B cell in the beginning. Okay. So the actual binding affinity could be even lower, you know, on this cell. So we think, you know, there must be some other factor contributing. So, but now uh, uh, a real critical question now is, 
you know, could, you know, because of this multivalent bonding interaction, indeed could relax uh, the, the stringency of computation. You know, to address this issue, we examine the process of affinity maturation after immunization. You know, it's clear from, you know, this, this plot, it's a computation-based plot. Uh, it's clear from this plot, you know, uh, the rising, so it's just here, from here to here, the rising uh, of the bonding affinity on GCB cell is a, it's rather rapid. Uh, it's rather rapid. It, the biggest change happened within, you know, the, the first two weeks. After two weeks, you know, the change to be uh, seems to slow down. You know, it's, it's better to see here. Seems to slow down uh, to some bit. You know, but because you know this assay is based on uh, static, you know, static, uh, steady state bonding. You know, so it can you know it's a measure bonding affinity and the steady state. So we also examine the real uh, affinity using antibody derived from GCB cell at a different time point after immunization. You know, here it shows this. Uh, this is a affinity metric, uh, uh, measure. So you you can see the plot shows that the change of affinity. Um, uh, so 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 it's a start from two weeks, four weeks, and uh, eight weeks. So the fin the affinity maturation actually still happened after two weeks, and uh, so it's continuing on. And you know with the you know in the in the in the last time point we observed there's still more high affinity uh B cell than you know than two than four weeks. So uh, although the statistic is not significant because you know the the, the distribution is more spreaded. You know, so this result uh, suggests that the affinity maturation is not compromised, even you know in uh, immune response to a multivalent uh, uh, antigen. So in our previous <laughs> slide, I showed that the lower affinity B cell need somatic hypermutation to start a GC reaction. We wonder what if a B cell cannot mutate their, their immunoglobulin gene to investigate. We examine response uh, and the affinity maturation in AID deficient mice. Interestingly, even though uh, AID deficient mice cannot undergo somatic hypermutation, but they have no problem uh, to, to mount a GC reaction. Uh, it, actually, number wise, their GC reaction is stronger than the wild type mice. But despite of this, you know, when measured uh, affinity is measured, we found that you know, AID uh, deficient mice, you know, their affinity you know, lagging behind. This is uh, uh, two weeks uh, after immunization behind the wild type mice. So let's take a peek. No, this is a, this is what we expected. Interestingly, when chimeric mice con reconstituted with both wild type and AID deficient bone marrow was immunized, uh, we were surprised to find the AID knockout mice contribute almost equally, <clears throat> almost equally. Uh, so this is a day 14. So this is a, so be, before day 14, before two weeks, they almost uh, contribute uh, equally. So this is a, uh, uh, this is somewhat surprising. Uh, uh, so we interpret this result as, you know, act actually the computation forces the selection of a high affinity B cell from the adding deficient mice. So this is not really the, the, the hypermutate and the, uh, but this is a selection. So indeed, you know, uh, uh, after day 14, the donor ratio of AD deficient B cell dramatically uh, uh, fell and uh, by 28, it's totally disappeared as shown here. So this results that you know, um, so, uh, and also you can see the the so uh, the affinity of the in the computation condition the affinity of AID knockout is uh, increased. So here, so compared in the separate transfer. So so in the presence of computation, so the AID knockout mice they first they 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 they, you, they, they select those uh, you know. Uh, are already you know germline high, higher affinity cell, but later on they cannot mutate and they were, they they got out competed. <laughs> so the above discovery prompt us to directly examine the effect of computation on the lower affinity B cell. Yeah, because uh, 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 due to the rarity of the antigen specific B cell in this transfer model, we modified you know our uh, computation based IC, and uh, we use a fixed concentration of code VLP that could block. Uh, fifty percent. Uh, fifty percent of the uh, fluorescent uh, binding of fluorescent VLP in wild type mice. 
you know, so uh, the 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 you know, the more you, you block, uh, the higher affinity. That's the that's the, the principle as shown in here. So the the higher block ratio, the higher affinity. Mm. So in the separate transfer uh, e e e experiment on day seven, the affinity of the uh, depleted cell was significantly lower than that of mock depleted cell, although they catch up later. Uh, but in contrast, in the mixed transfer study uh, experiment, the affinity rise to a level of the wild type cell. Yeah, so these results indicate that the presence of high affinity competitors actually accelerate the affinity maturation of a lower affinity B cell. So to summarize this part, uh, we found that in response to a virus mimic antigen, the lower affinity B cell can be mobilized to the GC reaction. Yeah, to our knowledge, this is the first demonstration that the canonical computation can proceed without compromising GC diversity. So what is the benefit to mobilize more B cell into GC reaction? Well, it contributes to better protection against the viral infection. To test this hypothesis, uh, we leverage on the high resolution structure information here, uh, shows the site of VLP interacting with anybody. Uh, so the, the, the interacting site is highlighted here. So this is uh, the structure of the sequence of VLP. Yeah, this is uh, the, the interaction site highlighted here. <clears throat> and uh, so we choose this site to make mutant VLP. Here's some uh, example. We test the antibody binding to this mutant. As we expected, some antibodies completely lost their ability to bind when one or more of the contacting amino acid residue was muted. And some antibodies are partially affected. However, for, su for surprise, we found there was also antibody that can bind all mutants. How are these antibodies are generated? We categorize the, all the antibody based on their ability to bind the mutant VLP. We define those that could bind nearly all the mutant as a virus proof antibody here, shown here. Interestingly, so the generation of the VP antibody clearly follow a process of GC reaction. I just point here. There are more VP antibody isolated from late GC stage, for example, uh, uh, so on um, two weeks uh, after immunization, there's only about uh, less than 20% of the uh, GCB cell are VP. But by eight, uh, for eight weeks, you know, more than 50% of GCB cell are VP. Lower affinity B cell also contribute to VP generation. For example, on day 28, uh, many lower affinity derived GCB cell uh, would bond a larger percent of the mutant. So. Yeah, but the, the number is we still need more number to you know to make a, a comparison. <clears throat> so this result support that it's really beneficial to mobilize more diverse B cell to GC reaction, especially in immune response to virus. Uh, of course, I should point out here the VLP antigen uh, uh, in the immunization remains the same uh, throughout the GC reaction. So this suggests that our immune system is capable of anticipating viral escape and make broadly neutralizing antibody before it happens. So finally, we also analyze the mechanism of binding by uh, VP antibody, long story short. Uh, we found that in contact between you know, the, the VP uh, antibody and the VLP is rather flexible. So when then one amino acid is changed and the, the antibody can adjust the conformation and adopt a, a new way of binding in real world, uh, some uh, antibody that could uh, run highly uh, variable region of some virus has been identified. So our work suggests that they could be the product of a long lasting uh, GC reaction. So, and, and the last, I think uh, the current GC competition model in the textbook should be revised. So instead of place in which uh, every cell fights for survival, GC can be an environment that Clonal computation and the diversity can coexist. This is a valuable adaptation of the immune uh, system. Um, and uh, we think it's also a powerful mechanism, uh, which I believe can be tapped into for making effective vaccine for viruses such as influenza and uh, uh, HIV. So a few take home message. 
Uh, I think the GC competition with the enhanced partic participation of the lower affinity B cell uh, promotes generation of uh, VP antibody. And we provide the first example that targeting B cell TR signaling and antigen presentation can override GC induced antibody immune dominance. Of course, you know, uh, this is, uh, you know, this, ours are first example. There may be more way to tap into this resource. Okay. Um, so, and plus this important slide, I will thank all the members uh, 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 of our lab. You know, they have um, make contribution to this work, especially uh, you know, the, the uh, uh, students I talked before, uh, especially Zhao Linghua. Uh, uh, it's uh, uh, my co PI in the lab and really make a, a great contribution, a lot of work. And also, thanks to the, uh, the collaborator in, in, in both uh, in, in the institute and other institute. Yeah. Uh, all right, also uh, for funding. Uh, finally, you know, uh, thank you all, and uh, uh, I'd like to have questions. Thank you.